Sponsored by the Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of a Bobby Bone show. We're so thrilled to have on the show an incredible guitarist, songwriter, and also a band leader, Adrian Vandenberg. Thanks for coming on, Adrian. Yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. You know what, it is, once again, once, once we met each other uh, again at the uh, NAMM show yeah. out in Anaheim, California, I had to bring you on the show, you know, in this U.S. tour that you're doing now with Vandenberg. Yes. I mean, you guys are selling out everywhere you go. Yeah, I have to say, in all modesty, you were doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've got so many uh, U.S. fans, though, you know, certainly from your time, 13 years with Whitesnake. Yeah. And, and so many of us know the songs that you played on and toured with them. But also, with Vandenberg, with the latest album you came out with, Sin, i got to tell you, there's a lot of great songs on here, like House on Fire. Thanks so much. House on Fire, yes. I mean, <laughs> the funny thing is, when I first started working on that song, I thought it has that... that American arena party vibe. Yeah. But then the lyrics turned a lot darker. Mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I thought of the, of, the, um, of, the, of the title, House of Fire, it, it's one of the things where you say when you have a party, you know, go, let's set this house on fire. <laughs> but then the lyrics turn out to be a little darker, you know, by the frustrated guy who is so jealous of everybody who has stuff that he doesn't have. Right. That he wants to set their house on fire. Not very nice of that guy. No, actually. but but also, you know, I got to hand it to you. And, and some people may not realize this, Adrian, but you're an incredible songwriter. I mean, you know, for the songs that you've written for Vandenberg, your band, but also for White Snake and everything else, it's like people don't realize you're writing the lyrics and the songs also. Besides churning out incredible guitar licks. It's not very nice of you to make me blush in front <laughs> of, the, of the camera. It's true. That's not very nice. <laughs> But uh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, you know, um, for me, it's a, na a natural thing, and mm -hmm. it may sound um, maybe weird to some people. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I, uh, and I listened to the radio, for instance, I heard, for instance, a song from the Monkees. When I was a tiny little boy, right. I heard um, I'm a Believer on the radio. Mm -hmm. And later I found out, years later, that it was actually written by a new... Um, um, uh, Neil, I mean, he, he's a very fa famous, I forgot his family name, sorry. <laughs> sorry, Neil. <laughs> but um, um, I remember thinking, okay, I like this part of the song, but mm -hmm. that part not so much. Right. So I got behind the piano. Um, my dad, my sister is actually a classical concert piano player. And my dad played as a hobby in jazz bands and there was always music in the house. Yeah. So whenever they went up behind the piano, I would get behind the piano and thought, oh, how about if that part would be with this part from the monkey song or whoever, I would like it more. Right. So I started writing songs just, and I thought everybody did that. Yeah. Just like with my painting, I thought, why doesn't everybody paint? Because it's fun, you know? Mm -hmm. But later on I found it's not as common as I no. thought it was. No, definitely not. And you've done such a great job with your songwriting and certainly- You do it again, you make me- You're world again. renowned <laughs> for your guitar playing, but, but I heard also that you, know, you had to pay a lot of money to the artist for this album cover because this album cover is really it grabs you you've got sharks you know with when on the cover of sin who was the artist who you hired for this um it was me to be honest and i <laughs> I, I had to pay myself a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> so did you, have you done the artwork for like all of your albums yes i did yeah yeah you know yeah the thing is um thanks to my my good dad you know he um he's up in heaven right now but um he at a very early age, I skipped school all the time because when I was 13, I got asked by a, a couple of guys who were in their 20s if I wanted to be a guitar player in the band. And, and they had electric guitars. And that was what sold me because <laughs> I wasn't allowed to have one. So I remember one of our gigs, um, the, the equipment that they had, I didn't have anything. Um, they put it on a, on a, a flatbed truck mm -hmm. and we went to the show that we were supposed to do. And I asked the guy behind the wheel, I said, can you drive by my school? Because I was skipping school. And, um, and he said, yeah, of course, you know. And uh, so I, uh, we drove by the school and my class was actually sitting like right, uh, right behind, behind the window right. where we drove by. I went, sorry guys, I'm not here. <laughs> I've got a gig tonight. Oh man, I had to, I had to stay, stay at school. I had to stay after five o'clock until seven until my mom picked me up. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it happened many times. It's oh my a, gosh, but, I mean, but you know, once again, you're, you know, so gifted in, in many areas, Adrian, but with your artwork too, while you took off some time with your daughter, you made a living painting. Yes, uh, because that was what I was actually trying to tell before I got lost in my own conversation. <laughs> um, 
my dad said at the time, okay, if you want to be a musician, okay, but mm -hmm. to the kind of music that you want to play, which is rock, right. uh, you can forget about it in Holland, which I thought too, because in Holland, rock is not nearly as big as, in, as it is in the States. Right. So he said, you either go to the conservatory for classical guitar or to, to uh, uh, art university. So I chose for art university. I thought sooner or later I'm going to end up teaching and I'd rather teach art the music. First right. of all, I can't read a note, that's one thing. And the other thing, I would not know how to explain to pupils mm -hmm. what to do. I, right. I would know because I do uh, everything. I go, oh, this sounds good. And then I fiddle around until I like it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay. Uh, and I don't have, pa I never had patience to figure out solos from other players. So I thought, man, I, w I would never have the patience to teach that. Do, 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 you know? <laughs> So I thought, if I'm going to teach, I'd rather teach arts, which I did. I, I, I taught art um, at a high school for about a year. Wow. And, um, but uh, I got kicked out because I was dating girls <laughs> in my classroom. I was, only, I was only three years older. So ah. I thought, yeah, why not? Not a problem. You but know, it's, it's like when you were a, you know, a young child you know, and started with the band Teaser. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, was, before you launched into Vandenberg. And certainly, you know, it, you've got to consider this, that David Coverdale sought you out for Whitesnake, yeah, did, you know, yeah. pursuing you to leave Vandenberg because you started Vandenberg, you know, before that, right? Yeah, I started Vandenberg in, uh, let's see, um, 1981. Yep, that's what I thought. Yeah. And, um, and so David's like going, I need you for guitar, I need you for songwriting, and then the rest is rock and roll history. 13 yeah. years playing so many incredible solos with <laughs> that, but also then you we were able to come back with Vandenberg, you know, and, and now with the music that you're doing and, and everything, really create some new sounds. It does, you know, it's, um, I, I mean, every day I feel really fortunate because I've never taken any of it for granted right. because it's a passion that went out of hand, you know, and I would never have thought that I would be still be running around the stage dressed up like a Christmas tree <laughs> every night and being allowed to do this because it's the people who decide if you can do this, you know, right. and, and I always take all the time um, the, the people that are waiting after a show, you know, for an autograph or whatever, they come, they bring up all those old records and stuff. Mm -hmm. When I was um, like a fanboy, when I was about 15, 16, and like one of my heroes played in town, like Rory Gallagher, oh. for instance, they played at the university where my father was a professor, and he played on the, on the terrain, and I was blown away that oh, Rory Gallagher, one of the most under, uh, undervalued guitar players oh, of all totally time. I totally agree with you. It's a connoisseur's type of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. So I was waiting in the rain for about an hour and a half for an autograph and to ask him how he got that sound. <laughs> so uh, one of the crew guys saw this spotty little kid standing in the rain, you know, patiently, and, and he, um, he said, so what are you waiting for? I said, well, if Mr. Gallagher uh, you know, would be so, so kind to give me an autograph, I would be really happy. So he brought out um, Rory and um, he just took all the time. And I thought, you know, if ever I will have the privilege to become a professional guitar yeah. player, I'd rather be a Rory than a Kardashian, for instance. <laughs> well, you know, the interesting <laughs> thing too now, Adrian, is that now those endearing fans, you know, kids and multi-generational, you know, uh, people are coming out to see you and want your autograph and talk with you. It's got to feel great. That's, uh, it, it does, and I, that's why I always take the time. I don't care how long it takes, you know, until usually my tour manager, Ralph, has to drag me away. And, <laughs> and he knows all about that. It's, you know? like, it's like pulling him out of a massage chair. Same thing, right? Like you know, this he has, morning. He has to yeah. pull you away from I, the I, fans. I was ready to use violence because he said, <laughs> I'm not going to go anywhere. There were massage chairs in the lobby of the hotel. Well, you know what? There's, there's nothing better when you've got a, an incredible album like Sin that's out right now. You've got music videos coming out from this. And then PV has reintroduced the Adrian Vandenberg model yes. with three different guitars, and you've upgraded this too. You haven't just rested on what you launched with PV back in 1987. Yeah. This is a whole new take. It is. Um, the, the guitar itself is exactly the same because it never changed a, um, a running formula. So but also, speak. you sketched out the body design yeah, on did. the wall. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, I was on the road, you know, uh, when PV suggested to me, you know, just come up with any design you like, mm -hmm. and um, they were really, really nice and I like that because at that time uh, PV guitars weren't taken very seriously like the amps were you oh know yeah. so um, it was much more challenging to, uh, and more fun to do that mm -hmm. than to just step 
into the, um, the huge um, arena of uh, Ibanez players, for instance, or whatever, you know. So there was like a challenge here. And um, while I was on the road, I, um, every day I put up like big pieces of paper and um, my sketches until I liked it because I wanted to come up with a guitar that, um, that like a, a Stratocaster or a Les Paul or something, you could recognize from a couple of miles away. Right. And yours is so recognizable. I mean, and I love the new uh, the fretboard inlays. You've gone with the Floyd Rose tremolo again, and now you've upgraded it with the Seymour Duncan pickups, where before yes. you did your own custom ones back yeah. in the 80s. And they were great pickups, but um, I realized at the time we made a bunch of improvements, actually, um, on the hardware, because at the time there were Kaler um, tremolos, right. but people uh, found it hard to find the parts for it because, mm -hmm. you know, Floyd Rose was the market leader. Totally. So we have the most, um, the, high, the, the highest level of uh, Floyd Rose on there now. And uh, I've always liked Duncan pickups. Uh, the mm -hmm. PV pickup that we developed at the time was really great, but oh, yeah. um, I used to do the same. Whenever I bought a guitar, I automatically put another pickup on right. it because you assume the pickup is not good enough. Mm -hmm. It was great, um, the PV pickup, but now I thought if somebody wanna, wants to put another pickup on it, it's easier to sell a Duncan pickup. Um, you go, ah, oh, I'd rather have another Duncan pickup or whatever pickup or the Marzio or whatever, um, and then they can easily sell it. Uh, uh, when you put on Craigslist list a PV pickup, <laughs> um, uh, no matter how good it is, you know, people, so I thought right. it would be good to put Duncan on it, standard, it's, it's an amazing, I mean, I sound like a second-hand car tire salesman. <laughs> but but I got to play it, too, but to where, you know, the thin neck, I mean, the feel of the body, it's contoured. I mean, the neck inlay is locking tremolo. I mean, and it's it tr interesting to me, and I know a lot of other musicians, Adrian, to where now the ones that you came out with in the 80s are collectible. They and are. Then, and you've got a new one now this year. Yeah, the thing <laughs> is, you know, it's a weird thing. When, when in 1999, I went back to Holland, uh, when Whitesnake dissolved at the time, uh, and I found out that I had to re-import everything I had in the States, because I stayed in the States for 13 years. Right. Um, I had to pay income, uh, 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 import tax plus VAT on everything oh I imported. So, th so I left a whole bunch of PV guitars in the States, um, assuming, well, you know, yeah, I, I took about five home and, and my Marshalls and PVs and whatever. Right. But a whole lot of stuff I left in the States and sent uh, the PV amps and cabinets back to PV. You know? right. So I did the same thing with the guitars. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, over the years, it became a collector's thing. Mm -hmm. And here we are. And here we are. And uh, so people started asking me, yeah, is there any, any PVs that you um, want to get rid of? I go, no, because I only have <laughs> four or five or something. <laughs> well, and also now you're working with Quad also, aren't you? Yes, Quad Cortex on my fly-in rig. Um, what people don't realize is if you t travel all across the world, you know, you can't always bring your yeah, whole you setup. Mm -hmm. So I got all these Marshalls and PVs and whatever at home. But uh, we do a lot of festivals where you just fly in yeah. and you fly out. So you want something reliable, that sounds as close as possible to my Marshalls and my Soldanos and all the stuff. So I use a Quad, quad Cortex, which, which we sampled, we made samples of my modded Marshalls and my special made uh, Soldano amp, oh, yeah. special Bogner amp. So that sound that I use on the, on the album that um, Bob Clear Mountain, uh, Bo sorry, Bob, Bob Marlette. Sorry. I was gonna bring up, because Bob produced sorry, this Bob, one again. Bob Marlette is a great guy. And, and so we put together this great guitar sound mixing those amps. Wow. So I wanted to use that sound on stage without having to drag all those amps. So I'm using the Quad Cortex with um, my simple sounds in there, so it's... Uh, you can't yeah. beat, especially for a fly rig. It's great, because... Yeah. And uh, you used it in a studio as well, because you recorded sin yeah. between Holland and L.A. Yeah, it was... It was um, that's why uh, Coverdale always called me the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> and, flying all over the place. <laughs> and now you are again, but with Vandenberg. Yes, it's... Um, well, you know, yeah, it, it doesn't stop. <laughs> Sorry about that. You know, and, and you're doing a co-headlining tour but with, uh, with Jeff Tate, yeah. where not only are you playing, you know, hit songs, from Vandenberg, which you have a number of hit singles as well, but also you're covering some of the White Snake songs too, right? We're doing a lot of White Snake stuff, probably about 70%. It was actually by dem demand of tons of fans, uh, and our agent said, you know, everybody, uh, every sub sub agent that I called said, oh, is he going to play White Snake stuff? You know, so that's why I'm doing under my own name actually as right. Adrian Vandenberg, so people don't expect all the Vandenberg stuff, you know. Right. 
and the, the wife. But well, you've got a lot of songs. I got to tell you too, the new album, all these songs sound great. I mean, you've got a couple ballads mixed in there. Yeah. I mean, you know, the the band that you've amassed with this tour, it seems like this is the best incarnation of Vandenberg you've done. I, I'm afraid I have to uh, agree. <laughs> Sorry, guys, you know, from the past, but they don't play anymore anyway. But, um, but you do. I do, and uh, they're not going to get rid of me, you know. Um, they're going to have to drag me off stage <laughs> kicking and screaming <laughs> when I'm uh, 96 or something. You know, around the time, I'm going to take a little break. A little and break. I'm, and then, yeah. when I'm and 90, then work on the memoir. 98, then I'm going to start touring again. You know? Yeah, and then time for a book and a documentary. Well, I want to make sure for all of our viewers, Adrian, where they can go to your website, for your social media, you know, to catch you on tour when you're coming to their town. Also, as we know, you know, the, the PV, you know, Adrian Vandenberg signature models releasing this spring. People are going to want to buy those. They may need those signed by you. Besides, you know, album, you need to have this thing on vinyl. The oh yes, it is. It, it is. is. Okay, it's good. On vinyl, yeah, it is. Yeah. Because the, just the cover artwork alone, you can hang on a wall. Thanks so much. So, but, but where do our viewers need to go, Adrian, for everything? You know, with your website and all that. Yeah, we have um, a Vandenberg Band uh, website on Instagram and the Vandenberg one on, and I've got two personal ones, Adrian Vandenberg, both on Instagram and Facebook and and all that stuff. You know. You guys know where to find me, no problem. <laughs> well, and also, go see him live, yes. uh, you know, on this great tour, the U.S. tour. Also, there's going to be, you know, a, a Europe and the U.K. tour as well. It's going to keep going. Sin is out now. So many great songs. You've got a music video out. I think get it on vinyl so you've got the artwork. But if you listen to digital, I get it. That's okay, especially if you're in your car. But go see Adrian Vandenberg live. And also check out his new signature PV model which is out now. Yes. Adrian, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure. My pleasure. Sponsored by The Big 98, Nashville's number one for new country and the home of the Bobby Bones Show.